How many Super Bowls has Travis Kelsey won? I don't know who that is. <laughs> What's up, Oilers? Welcome to Faculty Fusion, the show where we talk to staff and we ask questions so you guys can get to know them better. Our guest today is... Mr. Escobar. <laughs> All right, and my co-host is... Andrew Arias. <laughs> <laughs> We also have another ghost, another host, but she couldn't be here today. Um, her name is Katie. <laughs> All right. So I'm having too much fun with the. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to be asking him pop culture questions. So, as some of you guys may know, he came to my chance from 1998 to 2002. So he was around for a lot of significant pop culture moments, which people our age haven't <laughs> experienced. Because I'm old, it's okay. So, so we're gonna go through a list of questions that we have pre-curated, and we're gonna ask him what he thinks and what are his answers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Let's start off with our first question. What is your favorite celebrity encounter? I may have already told you this. It's very random. I have met a lot of celebrities because um, I used to live in Hollywood for a couple years. Um, but the one I always remember is it happened in high school. Um, in case you guys don't know um, who Keith David is, he's a voice actor. He's been in a bunch of movies and stuff, but he's never like the star. And so my friends and I were in line for a concert in Hollywood at the Key Club. It's on um, Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood. And we got there really early because we were nerds and we want to be in the front. And so my friend, um, Andrew at the time, was like gesticulating wildly, just like moving his hands, telling some dumb story. Keith David walks by. My friend hits the phone out of his hand. It falls, shatters, and then Keith David proceeds to tell off my friend on the street in Hollywood. So that was a great encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other favorite encounters? Um, I've seen... Al Pacino backstage at a, um, a play in at the Dor Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in L.A. Um, I've met Trent Reznor, which Academy Award winning uh, composer, Nine Inch Nails. Um, I went to an after party with some of the members in, of Interpol when I was like in college. And I think what else? I met Cher. That's kind of cool. Would you rather relive the hype for The Force Awakens or the hype for Avengers Endgame? Avengers Endgame, because that actually paid off. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst movie theater experience you've ever had? There's, there's been a lot. Recently, I can tell you, um, I still haven't seen the end of Barbie because someone pulled a fire alarm and it had, had the entire AMC evacuated. So Dang. I have not seen the last 10 minutes. If you could see one artist in their prime in the entire history of the world, who would you see? As much as I want to see, say, De David Bowie, because he's you know an icon and stuff, I still, like, it still hurts me that Prince had a residency at the Forum before it was called the Kia Forum. And he played, like, a lot. My cousin, Miss Ochoa, she went to one of the shows. I was like, oh, we'll see him later. We don't have to go. And he died, like, that year. So that one, Prince. What was life like before the internet? <laughs> <laughs> um, my parents were very, like, overprotective, so, like, I couldn't really go out and play. Like, you know, you would ask someone and be like, oh, we would just spend more time outside. I would just end up, like, watching movies and re-watching movies and re-watching movies and learning every single line of Star Wars <laughs> or Indiana Jones, that kind of stuff, or just listening to music. Um, but I can tell you, like, the transition to internet was, like, amazing, but also, like, kind of, it wasn't as cool as you guys think because you would just sit and stare at your computer as, like, line by line a picture would load on dial-up and then your mom would get mad and be like oh, i need to call someone like get off the phone and then they'd like unplug or like hang up the phone and then you'd be like well, I, I i i didn't get the picture or i didn't get the mp3 that i'm pirating that kind of thing so <laughs> <What? Napster? laughs> yes i was a pirate yeah all right, all right. I once got a cease and desist order from oh, <laughs> Kanye oh, West, <laughs> the, his uh, lawyers because we uh, my brother and i were downloading Jesus. 
Jesus. Yeah, that was not a fun day at the Escobar household. <laughs> Are you still a pirate? No, no, <laughs> I pay for streaming now. Yeah. He's a pirate. What? Yeah, no. <laughs> Did you get Facebook when it first came out? Yes. So when it when it started, I um I was in college, so I had a college email, and at initially, you o- you could only sign up if you had a college email. So that was like when Facebook was cool. Now it's just like Facebook moms posting <laughs> yeah. disinformation. <laughs> <laughs> what's the fa- What's your favorite president that you've experienced in your lifetime? Uh, Obama. Yeah, the first president I voted for was um i was not old enough for clinton i voted for john Kerry or whoever ran against george w bush yeah would you have al gore (laughs) he i mean he should have (laughs) won you're gonna cut this all out right it's not a political it's not a political all right all right fun fact i know i'm i I interrupt but (laughs) no no, go ahead go ahead go ahead um you know like when i joke that i'm old like I was born before the Berlin Wall fell. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the biggest theater reaction that you've seen a crowd have? I can tell you my biggest theater reaction, but probably um, the most recent is, like, Captain America getting Thor's hammer. That was, like, people cheering. But for me, literally, I think I've told you guys this before, Going after school, I was in high school. We went and got went to see signs. I was going with this girl that I was trying to like date. Base. I jumped. I jumped out and based. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I jumped out of my seat and screamed literally out of my seat um, during signs when Joaquin Phoenix's character sees the alien for the first time on TV. It was terrifying. Did you buy Apple stock when it first came out? No, because I grew up poor. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I still wouldn't. I had Tesla stock, and I sold it, luckily, when it was expensive. What's your favorite Marvel movie? I, I Doctor Strange. Really? The first one. Really? Okay. What's your favorite pre-MCU Marvel movie? Blade 2. <laughs> Blade? You don't like the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans? I'm, I, I always thought it was cheesy. What about Daredevil? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ben Affleck? No. Yeah. Do you think the fight against Kong was rigged? Kong, like the monkey? Like the <laughs> uh, no. no. Wait, like in Godzilla vs. King Kong? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. I mean, I, w- I was cheering for Kong. What's your favorite horror movie? The Shining. What did you think of Dr. Sleep? Surprisingly good. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Who's your favorite comedian? I don't know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Chris Farley, I don't know. Jack Black? Ja- no, I don't <laughs> like, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm not like a big, I like comedies, but like I don't like watch <laughs> comedy specials or anything like that. Jim Carrey? Nah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite comedy film? It's a good one, actually. Um, oh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I watch it every year before we go to Hawaii. What was it like being an adult circa 2005 to 2010? Really fun because the music was good at the time. There was like a post-punk revival, a lot of like really good bands from New York. I was going to shows a lot in Hollywood, so I would see um, a lot of up-and-coming artists that have broken up since then. So I had a lot of fun in terms of like, Concerts, because that's my that's my passion. Like hobby is going to concerts. What was a recent concert? Um, last earlier uh, on Sunday, I went to see the Postal Service and Death Cab for Cutie at the Hollywood Bowl. It was their twentieth anniversary of their albums. I'm personally not a big fan of either of them, but I went with my wife. Um, prior to that, what was the last show I went to? Oh, a show at uh, the Roxy in Hollywood. Um, or like an up, I'm actually wearing their shirt today. Oh. It's like a Italian disco band. Have you seen Taylor Swift? No, but I actually <laughs> would want to see her because I think like, you know, like 50 years from now or 20 years from now, whatever, people are going to be like, oh, that was like the Beatles. Like I wanted to see BTS when they were around um, and I didn't get to. So I'm open to seeing all kinds of music. Um, 
even if I'm not like the biggest fan. What is something that our generation puts on a pedestal about the early 2000s that you're like, it wasn't that good? Like where people <laughs> worship nowadays? Um, I don't know. Like what, what, I mean, what would you put on a pedestal? Or what'd you say people put? Like I would say people glorify Y2K fashion a lot and like NSYNC, like that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, that, oh. I mean, when you live through it, it's not as cool. Just like when people like, I, I was growing up and people were like, oh, the 80s were really cool. And then you talk to someone that lived in the 80s and they're like, no, it was kind of boring and you know, no one really wore like all the neon stuff. Like I think early 2000s, like Y2K fashion, I mean, just like whatever. I, I, I wore like just what I wear now. So like <laughs> jeans and a black t-shirt, so it doesn't matter. How do you feel about New York as a city? It's fun in small doses. Um, but I think overall, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to live there. It smells too. Dang. So NYC is, it's kind of glorified and it's. I'm, I mean, I'm West coast is best coast. So yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. If you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would you watch? Probably the shining just cause I feel like there's so many different layers and it's so weird and intense um but also like i'm trying to think what movie i always go back to i go back to shows mostly like rewatch tv shows would you rather never be able to watch a movie again or never be able to listen to music movie you can, you can like listen to music and close your eyes and imagine you know it's a good question who's your favorite spider-man tom holland <laughs> why why yeah i just feel like he's the one that actually looks like a teenager like he's supposed to be a, in high school and i think people that don't work in schools or are not in school they don't realize like what teenagers really look like so you know like um, i'll go home and my wife is like oh yeah like you want to watch euphoria and i'm like no because they're all 30 like i don't it doesn't connect so What was your favorite experience in college and moving away from Montebello? Meeting people that were, had similar tastes or views, but were very different in terms of where we come from, what we've experienced, what ethnici ethnicity we are, what religion or belief systems we have. That was really cool to find like a connection with someone that doesn't necessarily like look, or speak like the same as you do. Because, like, you know, we're, like, very homogenous here in a close-knit community, but it's, like, so vast out there. Was there any big culture shocks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like, like just what I said, like, you, know, you grow up in Montebello and you have, you're surrounded by people that look like you and talk like you and believe like you, and that's fine, and it's very, like, it's great. It's a great place to grow up. But the shock is, like, you are a minority, and you don't feel that necessarily here but you will in college. So that's that's the big shock. What's your favorite album? Funny that you asked this. When you asked me yesterday to do this, I was thinking, like, what if he asked me this question? <laughs> um, and I thought about it, and I listened to it on the way home. So it's Scary Monsters by David Bowie, 1980. What was it like um, in the lead-up from Iron Man to Endgame? Like... At what point did you fully buy into the MCU? The, looking back on it, the post credit scene in Iron Man. At the time, though, like, living through it, probably, like, two or three movies in, that you realize, like, oh, this is, like, interconnected, you know? Who's your favorite Batman? <sighs> Currently, um, who's the guy from Twilight? Robert Pattinson. Bro. Robert Pattinson. He's really good. The emo Batman. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like getting the call when the school offered to move you into S3? Oh, I mean, you've been in the room. It's, it's a great room, great location. Um, poor acoustics. That's the only bad thing. Sometimes, like, it gets really loud in there. It was, I was really happy because um, it, it's a place that I feel like I can build out um, a lot of different programs that we do and like your book is better because we're in that room 
the clubs are better because we're in that room. Film is better because we're in that room. So it's, I'm, I'm so happy. I never want to move because I've moved. This is my fourth move in 11 years. I know, like, I know one teacher that retired from the room he started in. So, like, I don't want to move anymore. Was it Mr. Frazier? No, no. Oh. I, fun fact, I had Mr. Frazier when I was in high school. <laughs> Whoa. Was, yeah, so he was in the D building. Yeah. Has school spirit changed um, any amount since when you came here to now? I think it's always been a struggle to, with school spirit at Montebello. I feel like there's pockets of people that have it a lot and then a lot that don't or just kind of like whatever about it. I do feel after COVID, now this is the second year that we're kind of opened and normal. It's ba- it's starting to get back. Yeah. And I think it's in large part to like kids being committed and also like, you know, new groups like Renaissance, Yearbook doing stuff, ASB doing, is doing good. Like everyone being committed to improving and Euler TV, improving like we're all in the same we're not like separate ships going in different directions. We are little separate ships, but we're going in the same direction. And once we all realize that, that we want to like build a better school, um, it'll be a fleet of ships. That's a really bad analogy, but I'm just saying it's better. Oh, yeah, I get it's it. better. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite franchise? Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. No, well, Star- I like Star Trek too. But. If you could only keep one, which one would you keep? After Rings of Power on Amazon Prime, I would say Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite director? Oof, David Fincher. In it, I want to say nice. Tarantino, but Fincher, like Social Network is in my top two movies of all time. So, yeah. I was actually going to ask you about the Social Network. <laughs> oh, I mean, like I, I went to see it not knowing that my favorite artist did the music. I went to see oh. it because I love David Fincher. And a lot of times, like, I'll watch a movie just because of a specific actor or a spe- specific director. Like, I'll see any Leonardo DiCaprio movie. But when I got there, and it was, like, not just the director, but the acting. Even Jesse Eisenberg, who sucks in everything else, he was fantastic in that. It was, I love that movie. It's, like, the epitome. It, it's the perfect movie for that decade. Yeah. Would you say the 2000s had that kind of vibe? Because I really love the vibe of the film. The dark, ominous, like, (laughs) no, um, I feel like 2008 was rough because it was a financial collapse and there's like a lot of issues with that, especially my generation, which that's around the time where people like were graduating college and there was like, okay, well now I owe all this money and I have no job, that kind of stuff. Millennials are screwed basically. Um, so it did have that feeling, but I don't think anyone knew that Facebook would become this, this like sinister place that it has become. What would you say is your favorite perk of working at Montebello High School? Doing fun stuff like this. So it's not just like grading papers and lecturing, which, you know, that's part of the job. But like interacting with students that are creative, funny, thoughtful, that, that's what makes my day. Does he make your day? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andy Richter. No. <laughs> um, yes, he occasionally makes my day when he comes and asks me weird questions about public <laughs> culture. <laughs> You too. Yeah. Uh, would you rather watch Rango or King Kong? Oh my God. <laughs> That's an Andrew question, and I was going <laughs> to say I'd rather turn the TV off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. What was your favorite part about the 2020 lockdowns? Spending time doing things that I wasn't necessarily always able to do, like with my wife and my cats, like just sitting down and watching a movie, as opposed to like, you know, like, for example, today, like, I'll get home, I'll make dinner, we'll probably spend a little bit of time together, and then I'll fall asleep, because I have to wake up early for zero period. So being stuck at home was monotonous and scary sometimes, but it was kind of nice to be with the people that you care about in a, you know, for extended periods of time. Do you have any questions? How many cats do you have? I have two cats. If you were to have a child, what would you name it? (laughs) I don't know. Trent. Trent. No. Miguel Jr.? No. (laughs) That's the name of like a restaurant, like a taco (laughs) restaurant. No, um, technically, I am a junior because my dad's name is Miguel Escobar, too. But I don't go by it. Would you say, would you call it a junior or would you use Roman numerals? Like the third? (laughs) The third. (laughs) No. I think we'd find some 
Some different name. I don't know. Complete the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one. <clears throat> Third time is the charm. I guess. Yeah. Who's your favorite Dumbledore? Michael Gambon, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. <clears throat> Oppenheimer or Barbie? I still haven't seen Oppenheimer, so Barbie. I know. <sighs> you should have seen it at seventy millimeter City Walk. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can just cut this dead air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, how do you feel about Ellen Burstyn? <laughs> Who's Ellen Burstyn? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. We're getting into the bottom of the barrel <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Like, um, I wish there was like a boo button. It's like a boo <laughs> head. a boo button. What the heck? That's us. Uh, cinema sins. Okay. Oh, uh, did you ever consider becoming a YouTuber? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no th- I mean, that wasn't a thing back then. Yeah. I know initially, like, YouTubers are what you think of a YouTuber. They used to do, like, podcasts, but they were video podcasts, and you could only watch it on, like, iTunes. Um, but even then, no. Would you be a Twitch streamer? No, but my friend just started Twitch streaming, and he was so happy that he had two people <laughs> watching one time. Uh, but he's he's streaming F1 racing, so he has a rig and a, a wheel, oh. curved screens. I don't know. Do you want to plug his Twitch stream on here? I don't I'm not watching. <laughs> I'm not watching <laughs> What was it like being on the ground floor of the digital age coming up? Like, Very exciting because piracy was... <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it was really exciting because it opened a lot of doors and you got to experience like different types of media that you normally wouldn't be able to because you would have to pay for everything. So, for example, like half of the bands that I like from like the early 2000s, I don't know if I would have necessarily found them because like you had to buy a CD... I'm not encouraging piracy, but I will say that, you know, like the the internet was different back then. Yeah, yeah. I got hacked. So I'm not gonna <laughs> do that again. <laughs> you have a Trojan horse on your. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite video game? Uh, I mean, this is a question that's like not the greatest game of all time, right? It's just your favorite. Yeah, just like. So I replay fun. occasionally um, Fallout New Vegas, and I really like Bioshock. But I still think that the greatest game ever made probably is um, Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda. Oh, yeah. Love that game. If you could go back in time and tell your 15-year-old self something, what would you tell them? To not be afraid to be yourself and to... Uh, that it w- everything was going to work out. What's the biggest pop culture thing that would shock your 15-year-old self if you could tell them? Uh, Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> 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 or or um, that, like, the state of streaming, like, that was not something that I could have ever imagined. That, that you, you can just access any movie yeah. ever. Yeah. That's really cool. What's the most disappointed you've ever been in a movie? So many. Is so Morbius? many. I didn't even bother <laughs> watching Morbius. Morbius. Um, possibly the, the Star Wars trilogy, the new, right? Like Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. It's garbage. <laughs> Just garbage. Honestly, that like I destroyed my childhood. Like that was, <laughs> Star Wars was my child. Like I, yeah, no words. <laughs> Is there uh, a boo button? A boo button. No, there's you no. need it. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, I would say the sequels are my favorite trilogy. <laughs> I, honestly, like they're <laughs> endlessly <laughs> rewatchable. They're really rewatchable. <laughs> like, I think they're great. Honestly. Okay. It's okay <laughs> if you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. What is the most controversial film opinion you have? I could think of one. What? what? Rango. <laughs> Rango. <laughs> Rango is bad. Everyone's in an uproar. I f- oh, Up is way overrated. <gasps> what? No. <laughs> Wally too. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> like Wally works when it's a silent film by himself. 
Once they introduce yeah. the humans, I don't care. And then oh, up, yeah, it, should it should have just been like a Pixar short where like the wife dies and then they just show like a sad old man. Like, that would be good. How'd you feel about Incredibles 2? I still have not watched it. Oh. I don't want it to ruin my Incredibles 1 opinion, which is that it's fantastic. Actually, yeah. Don't <laughs> What's your favorite legacy sequel? And by that, I mean a movie that is a sequel like many years removed from the original. Oh, the Blade Runner 2049. Oh. This is a softball for me. Yeah. Were you worried that they were going to mess it up as it was coming out? You had full faith. I had full faith once I knew that Harrison Ford was in it, and um, the cinematographer, um, Rob, Robert Deakins? Deakins, Deakins yeah. yeah. What about Roger Top Deakins. Gun? That one, I was just like, whatever. It was okay. Uh-huh. I, I just my problem with Top Gun was Maverick should have died. <gasps> it shouldn't have been like, oh, we saved the guy and blah blah blah. And also, like, I really don't like when. Studios studios change like the villain because they want to make sure it sells in China or whatever. Mm. Like the villain should have been the Chinese or it should have been like North Korea, but instead it's some blank enemy. <laughs> it lowers it lowers the stakes, yeah. but they got to make a profit. Can you recite three Gollum quotes? Oh my god! In the Gollum voice, yeah. I'm not gonna. Say <laughs> Gollum uh, what's Tater's A? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. My precious. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Yeah. Actually. <coughs> okay, that's... That, that was a sample. Yeah. That was a sample. Um, we wants it. <laughs> <laughs> These are too easy. <laughs> um, who's your favorite dwarf uh, from The Hobbit? Keely. Besides Keely. Gimli's dad. Gloin. Gloin. Yeah. Okay. I have one. I forgot his name. <laughs> give a- me a minute. Give me a minute. Andrew likes the hot <laughs> hobbit. I mean, the hot dwarf. <laughs> he's a Keely fan. Yeah. Keely Stan. Peter Dinklage. <laughs> no, he's not in the hobbit. <laughs> oh. He thinks like dwarves. You gotta like cut that out. You gotta <laughs> oh, cut no, that yeah, out. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said the same thing the other day, and I was like, what are you talking about? I'm, you know, I mean, he technically is a dwarf in Infinity War. Yes. So I guess you could count that. What's your favorite Rocket Raccoon quote from Infinity War? Doesn't he say, like, oh, yeah? What does he say yeah, when... Yeah, he says, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's in 2014, Guardians. No, okay, what does he say when he's on... He's on top of Groot and he's shooting when they, like, teleport in? I don't know. He doesn't say anything oh, on, no, on that know. specific shot. I don't know. Uh, how much for the arm? Oh, I like <laughs> that. How much for the arm? What's your favorite year from the 2010s? Year? Like, um, socially, pop culture-wise, in your personal life, like, which one was, was your favorite? I mean, other than, like, the economy coming, tumbling down and stuff, 2008 was cool because that's the year I graduated college. Um, 2004 sticks out for me, too. The, one of my favorite, favorite shows that happened that I was, I've ever been to in top 10 uh, was in 2004. Uh, the band is called... Death from Above, nineteen seventy nine. It was in, at the El Rey Theater in in L A, and it was just incredible, incredible show. It's just two guys. It's uh, two Canadian guys. What would you say to describe the feeling of graduating college and walking across the stage? Relief, <laughs> relief. Just because I mean, I was the first. I'm in the first generation of my family. My mom graduated high school. My dad didn't finish middle school, um, so college getting through it was really really hard just because not necessarily like the classes and stuff it's just like trying to figure out like what you're supposed to do like no one tells you you're supposed to go talk to counselors no one tells you oh these are the classes that you need to finish and stuff and if you don't have family that has done it before it's really hard so just the relief like sometimes I think back and I'm like how did I even do this not that like the academic part it's just like getting through it it's it's, college is a huge accomplishment so congratulations to everyone that is able to do it would you ever consider going back for your master's? Um, I've talked about it, but school, it's, it's really ex- expensive and also, like, time-consuming. So if I did that, I would have to, like, cut out some of the stuff I do at, at school. Yeah. Who is your favorite Gungan? Boss Ness. <laughs> what's, your favorite <laughs> what's, what's your favorite Boss Ness quote? 
What, what does he say when... <laughs> Boston is <quiet. laughs> What does he say to Jar Jar when he comes in? I don't, I don't know. know. I was thinking you of that. Both of you don't even know <laughs> when he does that. <laughs> What's your favorite Star Wars quote from the prequels? Oh God! There's always a bigger fish. <laughs> There's always. Um, I hate sand. <laughs> it's you Are you an go. angel? I really like a lot of the Misa stuff. <laughs> Misa called, it's called Jar Jar Binks. Boo! <laughs> what do you think of the fact that they made uh, Anakin C-3PO's dad? What? <laughs> Wait, he doesn't know that? Because Anakin made C-3PO. No, he's the creator. He's not the, the dad. Oh. That's weird. <laughs> so technically him and Luke are brothers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're not biologically related. <laughs> can you name three episodes of The Mandalorian? I can tell you three episodes where things happen, but the names? <laughs> no. no. The child. Something like that. Yeah. The pilot. Uh, when did the final battle of Endgame take place? Like date, date-wise. Oh, like a year? Or date, like the actual date? I have no idea. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tony Stark died yesterday in, yeah. like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was your reaction when we came into 2015 and it wasn't, like, Back to the Future Part 2? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I saw it coming. The weirder thing was when, like, the original Blade Runner that was filmed in, like, the 1980 or something, the future was, like, Los Angeles 2019 or 2017, something like that. And then, like, that date actually came. That was weird. Because certain elements of that movie are, like, are true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Give, give me one. Give me What's one. your favorite conspiracy theory? Uh, birds aren't real. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably that aliens exist. What's your favorite uh, film company? Like Paramount. Paramount, like uh, Warner Brothers, that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, currently A24. Or that's a production company. Yeah. Would you have supported Blue Beetle to support <laughs> <laughs> the Hispanic cause? No, because it looked horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you watch it if it was on stream? No. <laughs> oh. It's okay. Okay. Um... Have you seen Shazam 2? <laughs> no, and I don't plan to. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite DCEU film? Um, I don't... They're all <laughs> bad. They're all bad. What about Zack Snyder? Uh, <laughs> they're not good either. Um, probably The Suicide Squad. Yeah. What do you think about Zack Snyder's uh, Sucker Punch? Also bad. <laughs> Visually looked really cool, but the movie doesn't make sense. His only really good movie was, well, I really like Dawn of the Dead. Um, and the 300 was good. Even Watchmen, I think, is like overrated, kind of slow. Oh, right? yeah. What was the feeling like when they're announcing the DCEU and then you see Man of Steel and then you go into Batman versus Superman? <laughs> Batman versus Superman. I was like, where are the five movies between these two? <laughs> that where, Where'd they go? Where'd they go? It's like going from Iron Man to Civil War. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. just like, what? <laughs> My favorite quote, though, is, Kalel, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Have you seen Flash? No. Uh, Flash is actually really good. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> He's trolling. No. I would say that Flash is really good if you ignore the CGI. Story-wise, I think it's The story-wise <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who um, this man? What would you think of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? I only saw the first 10 minutes, and then <laughs> we left to get our money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. But the, the reason why is that there was someone that was like really being really disruptive in the theater. So I oh, okay. Like, oh, that's just yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, any other questions? Uh, did you get your money back? Yeah, I got my money back. Uh, yeah. And free tickets for the next show. 
What are you gonna watch on October twenty seventh? I know this. I know you're trying to say it's Five, <laughs> five Nights at Freddy's, but I'm not gonna watch that. No, actually, I think I might. I might, I might stream it. Okay. Yeah. Are you subscribed to Peacock? Yes, we have all the subscriptions. I'm watching it on the October 26th. The preview or yeah. pre-screening or something? I'm gonna spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was it like? Um, going from every Thursday night screening is 12 a.m. to it's like at 4 p.m. nowadays. I still won't go. Um, I like to see movies like in the morning on a Saturday or Sunday, just because like the movie theater, my favorite theater in LA, closed during COVID and then never reopened. The ArcLight, um, and they had like a strict no phone policy. They were like really hard, and like if they you were on your phone constantly, like they would remove you from the theater, that kind of stuff. Also, like the tickets were really expensive, so if you went, you were going to see the movie, you know. And so now I only my options are like AMC, Cinemark. The, the crowds, it sound, I'm sounding like an elitist, but like if I'm going <laughs> to no. pay money, I don't want crying babies. I don't want kids on their phones. I don't want like grandmas with like, oh, I can't, like the phone rings and they're like fumbling through and like I can't hear the dialogue, whatever. So I'd rather go when the, like the very first showing of the day where there's no one there. So I know that like the chances of someone ruining my experience is way lower. So like I will not do like, even for a movie that I was like waiting and waiting and waiting for, like let's say like the next Dune. I'm not going to see it on open night, opening night because, oh, okay. like, I, d I don't want to, like, deal with that and then end up being mad through the movie where I just really want to enjoy the movie. All right, so that's all of our questions. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Anytime. Pleasure. All right, guys, stay tuned. Thanks. Next week we'll have our next episode up.